Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Troy Wynn Sr. wanting to share with you just a quick word of encouragement for our morning devotion today. Still feeling the impact from this past Sunday's message, The Power of Obedience. I did not get to everything that God had given me, but I certainly shared everything that God gave me for that moment. And I want to share with you some of the things I did not get to in that sermon. So we'll call this The Power of Obedience Part 2. I want to look at Isaiah 1 and 19, and I won't be long today, but I just want to keep us on this track of obedience, because let me tell you something, that is where everything hangs in the balance. Let me say that again. Everything hangs in the balance of your obedience. And when you understand that, you will be more enthusiastic, more committed, and more focused about your personal obedience to the things of God, to the word of God, to the way of God, and those specific things that God has spoken to you that he has told you to do, and he's waiting on you to obey him so that he can fulfill the promises that he's made you for your life. Isaiah 1 and 19, the Berean study Bible says it this way, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. I want to read that again. Isaiah 1 and 19, it's in the Bible. It says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. This is why I continue to encourage people to obey God. And at the same time, it's why I continue to show people that God's desire is for his children to experience the best of the land. Sometimes people are bothered by my testimony and they're bothered when I give specific details of how God is advancing and blessing and showering me and my family, but they don't understand that everything that I'm experiencing here and now is a result of obedience. Everything that God is doing in my life right now is a direct result of me being willing and obedient. And I'm encouraging you, I'm trying to entice you and excite you about being obedient to God. You have to find a reason to get excited about being obedient. And I'm trying to give you a reason. It is the promises of God. It is the things that God wants to do in your life. It is the opportunity to experience the best of the land. And it is God's desire for you. Brothers, sisters, boys, girls, cats, dogs, and squirrels, if you are a child of God, God wants you to experience the best of the land. I think sometimes we can get so used to experiencing the worst of the land or just the average in the land that sometimes we kind of have this attitude about the best of the land. Well, I really don't need the best. Uh, it doesn't really require all of that for me. I, I'm good with just the average and the minimum. And listen, that's cute. But I need you to step up to the plate and get a taste of God's greatness. I need you to step up to the plate and be able to taste and see how good God is. And I'm not talking about on a basic level. I'm talking about on a supernatural level. I'm talking about on a level that you could never reach on your own. A level that is reserved for you by God. And a level that God is calling you to because he wants you to be able to tell others about it. See, a lot of folks miss what I'm teaching because they think it's about them. They think I'm trying to get them to do something that's about them when it's not about you, it's not about me, it's about us being able to draw others into the kingdom of God, not based on what we read, not based on what we heard, but based on what we're living in. I'm talking about living in the overflow. I'm talking about living in the promises of God. I'm talking about living under the favor of God. And this is what God wants for you today. But there's a key. There is a catch. There is a contract. The contract is you have to be willing and obedient. Willing and obedient to do what God has said to do in the word of God willing and obedient to obey the commands of God, willing and obedient to follow the instructions of God. Here's what I want to tell you about the power of obedience. Three points and I'm done. God can and God will find somebody to do what he told you to do if you don't do it. If you were there Sunday, you remember the illustration I gave that was perfect of how instructions are so important 
to the promises of God and that if we don't follow those instructions, God's never going to be at a loss. God will simply find someone else who is willing and obedient to the instructions that he gave you and they will be happy to receive what God is going to give them for their willingness and their obedience. Number two, what God has for you is for you when you obey his instructions. And I'm excited about sharing this with you because we have been led, misled, and deceived by the cliche, what God has for you is for you. We say it all the time, what God has for me is for me. And that's a lie. I'm calling it out. It's a lie. Because what God has for you is only for you when you obey his instructions. If you don't obey his instructions, what God has for you is no longer for you. And somebody needs to tell the body of Christ this so that they can quit wondering what's the matter, what the problem is. The problem is a lack of obedience. The problem is a failure to follow instructions. The problem is we're veering to the left and veering to the right of what God has said. But yet we're still looking for what God has for me is for me. Nah, nah, it's no, it's no longer for you. It's no longer for you because you do not obey the instructions of God. Now here's the beauty of it. You want it to be for you? All you got to do is obey God's instructions. All you got to do is just do what God said, do in his word. And what is for you will be for you. And nobody else can get it. Why? Because you're obeying your part. You're doing your portion and you're following the instructions that God gave you. So you might as well stop saying what God has for me is for me because that does not apply when you don't follow instructions. And I know I'm getting some pushback because you, you know, you've heard that your whole life and it sounds good and it feels good to say that. We even wrote a song about it. What God has for me is for me. It's a lie. What God has for you is only for you when you obey God's instructions. You say, well, Pastor, you got any word for that? Come on now. Who you talking to? Come here, Moses. <laughs> they need an example. Moses had the instructions of God to lead God's people into the promised land. Along the way, God continued to give Moses various instructions as it related to caring for the people, supplying for the people, leading the people, guiding the people. And one of those times, Moses did not follow the instructions of God. God told Moses to speak to the rock so that the people could get some water because the folks were complaining about being thirsty. This was actually one of the second times that he had told Moses to do this, to get the water from the rock by speaking to it. But this second time, Moses got aggravated and frustrated with the people that he was leading. This is why I'm committing in 2022 not to allow my church members to destroy my, my positivity, not to disturb my peace, not to mess up my vibe. I'm staying calm and cool all year long. I don't care what my church members do. Why? Because Moses teaches me that I can miss out on what God has promised me when I get aggravated and agitated with the people that God has called me to lead when they aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. And Moses got aggravated and agitated and frustrated with the people he was leading. And God told him, Moses, go over there and speak to that rock and I'll bring water out of the rock. But instead of Moses following the instructions, somebody better hear me today because I'm talking about the power of obedience. Because Moses did not follow the instructions. Instead of speaking to the rock, the Bible says Moses smote the rock, a.k.a. Moses hit the rock. And God still delivered water from the rock. But Moses no longer was able to have what God had for him. God said, Moses, because you have smoked the rock instead of speaking to the rock, in other words, because you did not follow the instructions, you will not enter into the promised land. He says, the only thing I can do for you is let you see it. And he instructed Moses to go to the mountaintop and to look over into the promised land. And Moses went up to the mountaintop, looked over into the promised land and saw what God had promised sitting right there. But I promise you this, he could not say what God has for me is for me. The reason why he couldn't say it is because he didn't follow the instructions. So I'm going to say this one more time for the folks that gave me some pushback because you didn't know any better. What God has for you 
is not for you if you're not going to obey the instructions of God. What God has for you is for you when you obey his instructions. And then number three, God will always do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You can find that in Ephesians, the third chapter, the 20th verse. The question to ask, though, is what power is God talking about? What power is God talking about that works in us that is the key and the catalyst to God always doing exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think? That power that works in us that determines the exceedingly abundant things that God is going to do above all we can ask or think? It is the power of obedience. And quite frankly, I believe this is a teaching that needs to go worldwide for the body of Christ because the large majority of the body of Christ is asking and praying and fasting and, and begging and believing, but still not following the instructions that God gave us. And I'm going to say this because I love you. No amount of fasting, no amount of praying, no amount of laying on hands, no amount of prophetic prophecies can override your unwillingness to obey the instructions of God. There ain't a person anointed enough to override your unwillingness to obey the instructions of God where you can still have what God has promised you because the promises are predicated on God's instructions. I said this Sunday, you Google it, you study for yourself and come back and tell me I'm right. Every miracle in the Bible was preceded by instructions. Every single miracle in the Bible was preceded by instructions that somebody had to follow if they wanted to receive the miracle, the manifestation, the promise, the breakthrough. And it's no different for us in 2022, people of God. You better figure out what instructions you have failed to unfollow and get about it so that God can do what he said he wanted to do in you, through you, and for you. Because that's the power of obedience. Let's pray, brothers and sisters. Dear God, we want to ask you today to please give us a humble heart to yield to your instructions at all times so that we can prosper, so that we can have what you have for us, so that we can experience the full manifestation of your promises in our lives. Father, we ask you today to help us obey you and to let us be flexible for the Holy Spirit's guidance. Let us follow you, Father, when you lead and where you lead so that we can receive every opulent opportunity you have for us. In the name of your Son, Yeshua Christ Jesus, we pray today. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, listen, I pray this has been a blessing for you and to you. And if it has, share it with somebody else because God knows the whole world needs to hear this. And you have a blessed day no matter what comes your way. And know that God loves you.